Well, howdy, friends. Brian Fleshick of Mad River Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another episode in our fly casting series. Today we're gonna to take a look at a cast uh, that we've touched on several times in the studio recently. Uh, we've touched on it when we're talking about the proper nymph leaders, but this cast is called the tuck cast. And it's a very, very important cast to understand and to master, although it's really, really super simple, when you are high stick nymph fishing. And we're here uh, in, in Ohio on the Mad River itself, uh, and it's fall season, and the water's pretty low, and not a lot of hatches going on, so therefore nymphing is the name of the game. And actually, nymphing is almost always the name of the game. Fish are always eating nymphs because there's always some sort of nymphs or larvae on the stream bottom. Although, as I say that, there goes a, a caddisfly hatching. A tuck cast is a very, very important uh, cast to learn. To get the right presentation, or I should say set up for the proper presentation with a properly designed nymph rig. Now, I've got a, a, a big fly on here, a big, like a damselfly nymph. And then of course I've got split shot on my leader. And then I've got a properly designed nymph leader. And then a strike indicator on here. In fact, I've got the new red and white Oros indicator on here. This leader, is specifically designed for nymph fishing, of course, and it really facilitates, it enables this tuck cast to work a lot better. In essence, a tuck cast is really easy. You don't change much at all in your cast. This can be done casting overhead as such, or it can be done by roll casting, which we do a lot with nymphs as well. Just simply letting that drift uh, drag downstream of you. Let me show you the full thing here. You let that, you let your lift drift swing out at the end. You're going to lower your rod down, bring it back behind you, and then you're just going to roll it out there. And you can still execute this tuck cast. In essence, the tuck cast is designed to get your leader to kick over such that the fly and the split shot and the strike indicator enter the water basically first. Fly first, split shot second, strike indicator third. And in a perfect world, it would be great to have that leader kick over 90 degrees so that all of that entered the water vertically, okay? The worst thing that can happen with a, with a nymph presentation is that you make a perfectly straight cast. Okay, then the nymph and split shot are gonna have to drag the, the midsection and the butt section of your leader down through the water, the water column. With this setup, which is what this cast is, you're setting up for a perfect nymph drift. Boom, your leader kicks over and enters the water straight down. Let's jump into the studio real quick and take a look at that on the marker board. Okay, so let me draw this on, on the board here and maybe you'll get a, a better visualization. But with the idea of the tuck cast and the properly designed leader, um, <clears throat> as opposed to that leader unrolling as such and unrolling perfectly straight like you would throwing a streamer or with a contact uh, fly fishing rig, the idea of a tuck cast is to get that leader to kick over, okay? And if you have your leader designed properly, then you stop that rod high and kind of bounce it backwards and it causes that leader to go out a little ways and then kick over. And that's why the leader formula uh, that we have shown you uh, in, in the past, and I'm sure there's a, a link right here to, uh, to a video on, on how we build that, that nymph leader, but that hinge that we put in there on purpose causes that leader to kick over. And then the idea is that the split shot, excuse me, the fly, and then the split shot and the strike indicator would theoretically all land in that same circle. 
and then the rest of the liter is going to pile up on top of it. Okay, of course the current starts to, to take it downstream almost immediately, and then your rod is going to come up high. This is why it's called high stick nymphing, and this is why we love 9, 10, 11 foot rods for doing this. Um, but it causes that leader to kick over and, and all those uh, pieces of the puzzle, again, your nymph, your split shot, your strike indicator to enter the water in that one little zone, as opposed to a contact leader or even a dry fly leader where it straightens out on you, okay? And that's where this tuck cast and learning a tuck cast when you're high stick nymphing is so, so very important. So the tuck cast, again, it really depends on having the proper leader formula and a, a leader that's gonna allow this to happen. And uh, we've talked about this countless times. I'm sure there's links to those videos. And before we're done here today, I'll draw uh, my basic nymph formula that I've got right here on the marker board for you. Um, but the tuck cast couldn't be easier. You really don't change much. It's just at the end of the cast, you stop, the, you stop the rod a little high, and then you just give a little kick of your thumb, a little kick of your thumb, and pull that rod tip back ever so slightly, maybe like an inch or two at most with your thumb. And what that does, stopping it high, causes a properly designed leader to kick over just like that, and then you'll notice that the nymph and the split shot hit the water first, then allowing them to sink much more quicker quickly and more effectively. So I just stop the rod early. I don't, I maybe don't come all the way to that 10 o'clock position. And if I do, I check it and kick my wrist back ever so slightly. It doesn't take much at all. If you kick your wrist back too far, that, that rig will come back flying in your face. So, well, that was not a fish, that was bottom. Boom, kick it back so that the Again, split shot, fly, and strike indicator, enter the water, and then you can easily just lift that rod, mend if you need to, okay? Mend that line upstream, and then you're always watching that indicator. And this particular leader, the butt section is tied with bright colored amnesia, <clears throat> which allows me to see the butt section of that leader. So you just stop the rod. Stop it and just kick your, kick your thumb back ever so slightly and it's going to cause that leader to collapse and the fly and the split shot to enter the water first. And then you have a perfect setup. You're going to raise that rod. Okay, and with a drift like this, you're always trying to follow along with the rod tip. First and foremost, make sure as soon as that fly hits the water, check it, kick it back, put the line under your index finger, control the butt section of the leader, and you're gonna follow along with your rod tip. Your rod tip's usually gonna be a little bit out ahead of the strike indicator, or in other words, downstream of the strike indicator. And remember that when you go to set a hook, you always set a hook in a downstream motion. That's a critical piece of a device. I know it's not a fly casting tip, but make sure that you're always setting the hook in that downstream motion. You don't want to be following along like this and then have to go like this. I call that technique get away from my fly. And it's going to take you six foot just to pull the fly away from the fish. Whereas if you're setting the hook in a downstream motion, it's just a couple of inches or less to set that hook if you've got good control. Remember that the key to successful fly fishing is control. But just a real simple kickback of your thumb maybe just an inch and that's enough to cause that leader to kick over and there we go a leaf one of the joys of fall fishing and again this can be done overhead casting as you normally would just kick that rod tip back and that leader kicks right over and you get a perfect setup for this nymph drift or it can be done via a roll cast boom kick it back split shot fly enter the water first and then you get a perfect setup, a perfect nymph drift. Again, having your leader straighten out perfectly is for contact fly fishing. 
Nymph fishing is, of course, non-contact fly fishing where the nymph and split shot are bouncing along the bottom as if they were unattached to the leader and you don't have contact with them, okay? But keeping that level of control within an inch or so is of critical importance uh, when you go to, when a fish takes your fly. Kick the thumb back, it causes that leader to kick right over. Now it's gonna be pretty floppy and that's fine, okay? The presentation, the delivery of these fly, flies when you're nymph fishing is not nearly as important as say in dry fly fishing. You're just trying to get the nymph to the bottom as quickly as you possibly can. So kick it over, set your drift, get the rod out in front of the indicator, and make sure you have the line under your index finger. So <clears throat> there you have it, tuck cast. Just a simple little tuck, stop the rod high, move your thumb back a little bit, causes that leader to kick over. So let's go to the marker board real quick and I'll write down for you again uh, that nymph leader formula that we use for doing this. Okay, so we've shown you this nymph leader uh, formula before, and, but I figured we just have it here for you in this video because it works in conjunction with the tuck cast, and it's super simple. I use a 20 pound, which is 19 thousandths amnesia, and I use that on a four weight, I use that on a seven weight for steelhead, and I, use, I usually go three foot, of 20 pound amnesia and I like the red amnesia I see it better but it also comes in the green color and then this is where the hinge comes okay this is what causes this leader to tuck we go from 19 thousandths to to maybe two foot of a limp material much more limp than amnesia and I usually use Maxima Ultra Green or say Orvis Super Strong or Cortland uh, standard monofilament, but more of a trout kind of tippet. And I'm usually going somewhere around 12 thousandths. So you're creating quite of a hinge between that 19 thousandths and the 12 thousandths, and also changing the uh, stiffness in going from the amnesia to the ultra green. And then we're gonna make one more step down. We're gonna go two foot of maximum ultra green and say nine thousandths if you're trout fishing. And then I'm going to tie on a tippet ring. And you can make up these leaders. Um, you can have some butt sections. Of course, I snell the butt section to the tip of my nymph line. If you swap out leaders, you just put a loop in the end of this and loop to loop. Um, and then you're going to add whatever, two foot, three foot, whatever length you want the leader to be. You add, you know, maybe two to three foot of, say, 3X, 4X, or 5X tippet. If this is a steelhead leader, I might make this 13 thousandths, I might make this 10 thousandths, or I might make it 15 and 12, and then I can go to 0x or 1x tippet. It doesn't change all that much. I might just stiffen up that butt section, thicken up that butt section to accommodate the larger tippet. Super simple, and it just kicks and tucks perfectly in conjunction with this tuck cast that we're showing you. So there you have it, friends. Uh, a proper nymph setup usually with a nine foot to 10 foot fly rod, a proper leader that's gonna, that's gonna collapse right in the middle, which allows you, allows that tuck cast uh, to make the leader do what you want it to do, which is a much different presentation, again, than streamers or with dry flies. So the tuck cast is nothing more than stopping your rod high and just kicking your thumb back, maybe about that much. Okay, super, super easy. That leader will kick right over and you'll get perfect nymph drifts every single time. So thanks as always for watching. We appreciate you being here. Get out and practice those tuck casts. As always, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss an episode. Uh, email us or give us a call if you have any questions and please stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming at you.